Hello there. My name is Petra Dida. I am from the Victim to Hero Institute. Now, normally I give a talk about parental alienation, different aspect of it to my community, to the community of people that, is, that are involved or that are affected by parental alienation. But today, being the Parental Alienation Awareness Day, I wanted to give this talk for the general public. Because what I'm hoping is that this video can be shared out there to the general public who are not normally familiar with parental alienation, so that there would be information for the public to be able to understand more about what parental alienation is and how you can make a difference, why it matters. So thank you so much for being here. For people that don't know me, like I said, my name is Petra Dito. I am a child, an adult child of parental alienation. Now, for people that don't know what parental alienation is, parental alienation is what happens when a parent or a step parent or someone who manipulates um, or um, brainwash or potentially prevent a child from having a relationship with a parent. Um, now, this usually happens in a divorce or a separation, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and this usually comes from different kind of behavior um, that we call alienating behaviors. So, such as dis disparaging remarks, um, you know, saying something negative about a particular parent. So, saying things like, you know, your father is violent, or your father is an alcoholic, or your mother is um, really emotionally unstable, or your mother doesn't care about you. Things like that. Things that saying things that are negative and giving the impression that a parent is either unsafe or unavailable or not a good parent to the child or in front of the child. And what this does is it leads to the breakdown of the relationship between the child and that parent. Sometimes the behavior isn't get as blatant as actually blocking the access or, or even abducting the child and move to a different state or different country. Now, this is a very serious problem. I experienced this as a child. I was alienated from my father. My mother told me that my father was a bad man, that he didn't want anything to do with me. And he was a bad man because he abandoned me, he abandoned us. Now, so I bought into this false narrative and I grew up and I just repeated whatever my mother said. I never questioned that. So I repeated exactly what she said. He was a bad man. He abandoned me. He doesn't want anything to do with me. So as I was growing up, much later, later on in, in my teenager, my father was able to reach me, but I rejected him. I was cold. I was rude. I was just totally defiant. I was just completely ignoring him and refused to have a relationship with him. When I got into my adulthood, and by that time, I have had my children um, by then, and he reached out to me on Facebook. And at that point, I accepted him as his friend's request with this single purpose of going on to his Facebook and immediately blasted on his Facebook to destroy his reputation, to humiliate him publicly. And then as soon as I did that, I then removed him and blocked him and never talked to him again. Now, by the time I'm in my 40s, um, a lot of things has happened. What has happened is then I became an alienated mother. And as I was going through this process and trying to understand what was going on with me, one of my relatives reached out to me and said, I can't hold it any longer. Your mother did everything she could to prevent you from having a relationship with your father. I want to talk to you. So as soon as I saw, I saw that message, I understood. And I never had that conversation with that person. But I then went and searched for my father. I did a few searches um, with his name and with you know information that I knew about him with my name and you know the location that I knew of him last. And um, it didn't take long. And I found a website um, that he left for me. Because by that point, my father had passed. It was too late for me to have a relationship with him. It was too late for me to reconnect with him. It was too late for me to apologize. But what he left was a website that showed me his diaries, letters between him and my mother, 
court documents and various different things. And it's heartbreaking to see how much pain and hurt and how much struggle my father had to go through. I then found out that he had um, two other sons and a wife that he left behind. And I had a, the opportunity to talk to them and also his friends and family. And I found a wonderful man that I never got a chance to know. Now, growing up without my father impacted all aspects of my life. Later on in my life, it translates into getting stuck into cycles of abusive relationship. I became a victim of domestic violence. And even though I look like I'm normal, I'm okay from the outside, the society can't see it, but, but I was broken, broken inside. And the only thing that helped me heal and helped me fight and I eventually fought and won my children back and I now have a beautiful relationship with my children is because of what my father left behind for me. For me to understood the struggle that he went through. Now my experience is not an isolated experience. Millions of children in America and around the world are victim of this. Now the impact of parental alienation on children is devastating. There have been research, 35 years of research in the, in the field of parental alienation alone. And way before that, and along with that, is research into adverse childhood experience that's done by the CDC. There's many other studies by the, funded by the government, the NIH, NIH, the National Health Institute. Uh, the research into children of divorce, research into uh, development, uh, developmental um, trauma, and things like that. There's many kind of research that show the same outcome is that when children experience this kind of trauma, growing up in you know environments that full of conflict between parents, where children are being put in the middle of parental conflict, when children are being used as weapon against an ex-partner, an ex-spouse. That kind of situation leaves devastating impact on the children. Not just psychological impact, but it also manifests into physical illnesses and, and condition that's devastating. And these children, the, the fact that they never get to fully develop healthy, it translates into a very significant cost to society. There's a study by the University of Colorado that estimated that over 3.9 million children in America alone that are victims of moderate to severe alienation. Like I said, unfortunately, parental alienation is a worldwide problem. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you are well educated, if you are poor, if you are rich, if you are homeless, if you if you are any color, if you are any gender, it impacted, it, it can hit anybody. So the impact, it, it's such a severe problem and it's such a widespread problem. This is a public crisis, it's a public health crisis. Why are we going through this problem? Because the system is broken. I mean, I talk about the experience of, of what the parents are going through, uh, I mean, of the children that are going through, but I haven't even touched on what the alienated parents are going through. It's, it's just traumatic. It's a, it's a multi-level systematic attack on the alienated parents. Because what happened is they are dealing with this divorce or separation with somebody that they once thought that they was going to have a life with. And then this person or somebody around that, it could be parent or it could be step parent or friends or family, perpetrates this alienation campaign. So this campaign of denigration, there's gaslighting, there's projection, there's all, all sort of psychological abuse, and then sometimes even physical abuse. So this direct attack from the alienators. And then on top of that, you get the rejection of the children. 
because the children not just sometimes they call rude, distant. Sometimes they doubt, right, reject, and refuse to see you. And then sometimes they spying on you because they participate in the campaign of alienation by the alienators. So, so they sometimes will spy to, to get information to then feed it back to the alienator. Sometimes the children will participate in the campaign of false allegations. So alienators, this is a very, unfortunately, a very effective tool for alienators is that sometimes they will come up and, and actually quite often they will come up with uh, with a lot of false allegation because they wanted to create this sense that the, the, the alienated parents is uh, are dangerous, that unsafe or unavailable. So they would come up with all these type of, uh, of outrageous allegation, including physical uh, abuse, sexual abuse. Uh, you know, neglect, crazy, crazy stuff. And then when, if they, then the situation where when they can't really attack the the alienated parent, for example, if they can't, if, if that particular parent has such a great reputation that they can't attack that parent directly, they will attack people around that. So for example, if a mother is an alienated mother and then have a, a new partner, they will then put false allegation on the, the mother's partner, saying that, you know, the partner maybe have caused um, sexual abuse on the children. And it's not just, just, it doesn't have to be a mother, even the father, you know, having a new partner, the same thing. Or sometimes it's a, it's the alienated parents, uh, family or friends. And then they use that kind of excuse to take the children away and then employing the court system to take the children away using this false allegation. So the, the targeted parents are being attacked by directly by the alienators and then by the children. And then on top of that, they're being dragged through the court system. The system failed them. They get they get to go through just just dragging out and dragging out just court cases, court cases after court cases. And they're spending so much money, they go broke, they go homeless. And then that's not even, it's not even finished. On top of that, alienators doesn't do this alone. Not only they recruit the children, they recruit families and friends that, that they throw in mudsliding campaign against the alienated parents. So then these people turn into flying monkeys. So the community that was around the alienated pa parents now suddenly turn around and attack the targeted parents. Sometimes it's including people at work. So then they end up losing their job because of these false allegations. They're losing their friends, they're losing family. And sometimes family because they wanted to have a chance to see the children. So they actually take side with the alienators and then participate in the alienation just in the, in in a chance that they can negotiate with with a terrorist basically so that they can still have some kind of contact with the children it's horrible that the targeted parents being thrown under the bus and being targeted from all angles and there's such a lack of public awareness the targeted parents when they look at this it's it's so traumatic it's so overwhelming they, they never heard of this before, so they don't know what they're looking at. They, ha they have no idea what they, they're experiencing. And because it's so outrageous, they can't talk to anyone because it's really the truth is stranger than fiction. Because when they talk about this to people, people think that they're just making this up. It's so crazy. Nobody would believe them. People will tend to have, society has this, this tendency of victim blaming. So when, when an alienated mother or an alienated father talk to someone about their situation, instantly people will go, oh, you must have done something bad. You know, it's, 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 children don't just reject you, things like that. It's that, that victim blaming. So really victims are being re-victimized on top of that. So these parents, because it's such a lack of public awareness, they don't know what to look for, where to look for, and there's really no resources for parents, for alienated parents. So they have this sense of isolation. They feel like they are the only one that experiences. They have nowhere to turn to. It's hopeless, it's hopeless. And in the meanwhile, the children are being taken from a loving, available, fit parent and being left with an abusive parent. The children are being brainwashed 
and putting through all of this. And let me tell you this, as an alienated child, even though I repeated this false narrative and I said all this thing about my father, deep inside, I was longing for him. I was desperately, I desperate wanted him. And the same with these alienated children. We are all trapped in this prison that we can't speak out. Some of us understand that something is wrong, but we don't know what is wrong. Some of us don't even know what is wrong. We never ask to divorce one of our parents. We were forced to. Because why? My mother was the only person. I was a little child. If I go against her, who's going to take care of me? I, I don't, she blocked my father. I had nowhere to, I was, I was a little child. The only way for me to survive is obviously to obey and, and do whatever I need to do to serve her. And this is what alienators do, destroying the children. And the problem with the system is, like I said, first of all, there's such a lack of public awareness. This, this doesn't have a recognition that parental alienation is child abuse. When people are looking at a, a big court case, they tend to label it as a high conflict situation. Now, when you think of high conflict, you think of two parties that just both really bitter and fighting against each other. But really in alienation, a lot of the time, it's one party that perpetrate the abuse and the other person just have to react and respond to it. And there's no choice because what choice do you have? You, you can't give up your children. So you continue to go through the court system and continue to fight. You have no choice. And that's the problem is when the system look at that, the system think that this is just too much drama and just between two uh, adults about, you know, they, they fail romance. They forgot that the children being caught in the middle. They forget that the children are being abused in the meanwhile. It's a very serious problem. And then when you have these victims that recognize that, okay, this is a problem. For example, me as an adult child, now that I recognize this is a problem, as a victim or as a survivor, I have nowhere to turn to. You can look at any kind of marginalized group out there. You're looking at domestic violence, you know, victims of domestic violence. You're looking at uh, gay and lesbian. You know, you, you have some kind of hotline to call, you know, suicide hotline. You got, uh, you know, homeless shelter. You got somewhere. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I, and that's great, that's amazing. But the problem for us is we have nowhere to, to turn to. There's no hotlines, there's no shelter, there's no center, there's nowhere to go. This is a very big problem. There's no protection, no resources for victims. Then on top of that, there's no punishment for the abusers. Because why? Right now, there's nowhere where parental alienation is recognized as child abuse. So the abuser, even when the alienated parents are successful at fighting to get their children back, there's no ramification. There's no consequences for the alienators. If the, the worst thing they, they can do is win, why wouldn't they continue doing it? The system is really broken. There are existing law out there. Even when you're talking about, even let's just say we, we don't have law for parental alienation, there are existing law out there that the system is refusing to enforce. This is a very big problem. There's perjury, there's custody interference, there's children rights, there's parents rights, there's all these different policy and, and law out there that the system is not enforcing. So for example, when an alienator create a false allegation against an, a targeted parent, this targeted parent literally give up all of their life, spend all of their money to defend themselves and then try to fight for their children back. You know, after they gone through sometimes even like decade, a decade of fighting in court to finally prove that, no, I'm not an abuser. And yes, I deserve to see my children maybe once a month or whatever it is. Finally, now that I lost my job and oh, you know, whatever it is, like they gave up all of their life, right? And be able to prove that the allegation is indeed 
a, a false allegation. Well, you know what? We have the law for perjury. When has it ever been enforced? Alienators just walk away. There's no problem. They lie, they made up all these lies, they destroy people's life, and there's, there's no consequences. And then on top of that, these lengthy and expensive court processes, well, you know what? Children are not a physical static thing. Children grow. And then eventually they age out of the system. By the time they get to 18, that's it. There's nobody to enforce. Alienated parents have no legal resources to, to, to protect or to fight back for their children. It's ridiculous. So the system will drag out. And, and, and why? Because the system have an incentive reversal problem. Lawyers get paid a lot more if the court case drag out. Therapists got paid a lot more if the case get dragged out. Guardian ad litem, custody evaluators, everybody. And then not even mention about child support. The more the state collect from child support, the more funding the state get from the federal government. The system is reversingly, in, like it's the wrong way of incentivizing people. We incentivizing people to create more trauma for children, create breaking more families. The system needs to change. And all of this, I truly believe, start from the core of it is the lack of awareness. We don't, as a system, as a society, and, and, and even at professional at all levels, we don't recognize that this is a serious form of child abuse. We, we overlook it. And because there's not enough training, there's not enough enforcement, there's no accountability. This become a huge problem and it's much bigger than it should be. And then there's also for people that that there are few people that do understand what parental alienation is. So people like, you know, maybe there's some mental health professionals, some lawyers, some judges, there's, there's some policymakers that do understand. Then there's a lack of a way to identify or diagnose the problem. Why? Because big organization like the APA, the American Psychological Association, uh, United Nations, there's many organizations out there that refuse to recognize that this is a problem. And they, and they fall into this trap of there are special interest groups that claim that parental alienation is not real, that is a tool for abusive parents to take children away actually abusive father to take children away from mothers. Well, let me tell you this. I am a victim. I am a survivor of it. I am a mother. I was that child. My experience is real. There are millions of children out there. We have an organization called the Hero Circle that consists entirely of the adult children of parental alienation. All of our experiences are real. You can't deny that that didn't happen to us. We are the children. We're not here to fight for custody. We are not here to get even with our exes. We're not here to raise or lower child support payment. We have no stake in the game. We are here to tell you that we don't want any more of this thing to happen to any other children because what we went through was horrific. So stop denying that this problem is real. There are challenges, just like any, any other kind of problem, but denying that this problem is real is the first problem. We need to recognize that this is real and then figure out ways to how to solve this properly. And our society has this gender bias. You know, when, when we're looking at a father, we tend to think that, you know, when, when a father being accused of, um, being abusive, people tend to buy into it very quickly. Or when a mother being claim of being, you know, mentally unstable, people buy into that kind of, uh, that kind of accusation very easily, because we have this gender bias in our society. And that's also a problem. And I'm not even talking about corruption. Because really, I, I don't want to go into that. But really, 
you can't deny that it does happen. And when it does, it's horrible. Today is Parental Alienation Awareness Day. So what I did is I went on, uh, we went on to our community um, at victimtohero.com, I mean Victim to Hero Facebook page, and we ask our community, what is your message to the world? And I wanted to go through and read some of these messages. I won't be able to read all of them, but I would like to read some of it to share with you. And if you want to read more of it, please go to our Facebook page, Victim to Hero, and you'll see it. Uh, but for example, uh, Fernando said, wake up. Christian said, stop accepting rejection of a parent at a face value. Look for the reason the child is resisting. And to targeted family members, stay strong, stable, and sending love. Casey said, the alienated parent is a child abuser. The child or the children need to be removed from that abuser. Alienation needs to be recognized to be as a crime. As a crime. L said, having dealt with the ignorant morons of the 16th Circuit Court um, and having listened to their absolute uh, claims for the need for legal wiggle room and the right to translate the law, I can only hope that um, I think he's very angry. So I, I think I won't be reading that. But let's just understand he's very angry about what happened to him. Carrie said, uh, parental alienation does not discriminate. This is exactly what I said earlier. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to a father or a mother. It can happen to a very wealthy family or a very poor family. It can happen to you in America or any corner of the world. It can happen to really, there's no discrimination, unfortunately, and it's very widespread. Um, Jessica, uh, Jessica said, I was an alienated child. I am free and reunited. So that was a positive message. Sam said, it's real and it's unfortunate. Take care of yourself mentally. Uh, George said, children need a voice just like adults. Stop and listen to the children. Actually, I want to comment on that. Now, sometimes sometime the system will say, oh, we should listen to the children. And that's true. I mean, children, um, it's important that we understand the children so that we can actually truly take care of their best interests, their developmental needs and their well-being. But in the situation of alienation, it's risky. It takes somebody, somebody that truly experienced because children have been brainwashed. So, and, and so if you were to ask me, when I was a child um, in the court system. And I mean, I have interviewed over 300 adult children of parental alienation now. And the situation is very similar. We were so brainwashed. If you ask us back then, we wouldn't know to say the right thing. And then we would end up, and I, I talked to children that did this, they end up because they were forced to choose. They end up making a decision that they regret it for the rest of their life because they end up giving up a parent that they never wanted to give up. So it's important to make sure that we get what is right for the children. But in terms of the children's voice, we have to get a way of figuring out if we are truly listening to the children or if we are simply listening to the abuser through the children's voice. OK, uh, Melina said, never give up. Um, Don said, listen and believe the adult survivors, because we know what it was like living in this often court sanctioned abusive environment. Yeah, that's that's something that Don said is so true, because this is also a very common problem. And Don, by the way, is a, a survivor, an adult survivor. She eventually found her dad and reunited with her dad. But really, it took all of her life essentially uh, in that toxic abusive environment the same as i was um, and, and it's very common because 
children end up in the hand of, of an abusive parent. So the abuse doesn't end at alienation. It usually also translates into other aspects of the children upbringing as well. Uh, Vivian said, children first, not your personal feelings uh, for your ex. Yeah, and that's the thing. Alienators have such a malicious intent because they are so, so focused on attacking the target parent. They're so focused on winning over the target parent. They want to destroy the target parent. So they, they, while they're so enraged, they forget about the children in the middle. They sometimes, maybe it's not intentional, maybe it's a, the lack of awareness. They destroy the children because of that. Barbara said, hear us. Lewis said, children need both parents. Uh, Crystal said, parental alienation is child emotional abuse and domestic violence by proxy. Court can stop it. Take action today. Angie said, stop allowing false allegations to harm your child. This tactic is abusive and causes uh, irreparable harm and it's also legal abuse. Jennifer said, this happens to both genders just as often. Uh, Colette said, children need and, ha and have a right to both parents. Nihan said, don't support parental alienators. Children need both loving parents. Scott said, never let anyone steal your joy. Stop the gaslighting. Miranda said, bloodline abduction, kidnapping of council units for the land. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. I'm sorry. I think that's not quite relevant. Or maybe I misunderstand that. Um, Mary said, put children first. Terry said, this needs to stop. So uh, I, I won't be reading anymore but you get the gist of it. This is a whole community of people that voicing essentially is the same thing. This is a very serious problem and it's the children that's, that's the first people that suffer. We need to protect children. April is the child abuse awareness month. This is a perfect time for everyone to stop and listen to this, listen to these messages, listen to this, this story, this, it's really important. So how can you help? If you are someone in the position of a policymaker, or if you are a professional that have an influence in these sort of cases, whether you are a lawyer or mental health professional, um, a court order official in some way, please get educated in parental alienation, please get informed. Please do the right thing for the children because everything that you do have impact in our life for the rest of our life. So please do the best you can. Please, the, the thing with parental alienation is it's full of misinformation and it's so counterintuitive. Because for example, normally you would say that, well, you know, we should listen to children because children are, innocent right um so but so when a child reject a parent they would immediately assume oh that parent must be bad and that's a problem because that's the thing with parental alienation it's very counterintuitive a child will actually choose a parent that they know loves them why because that's the safe parent to reject because the other parent is going to punish them the child needs both parents but they know that the alienated parent is gonna still always there, loving them unconditionally, no matter what. So the safe whole thing is to reject that parent and then obey the one that is threatening. So really it's a very complex, and it like on top of that, there's false allegation, which makes it difficult to determine. But please, please, if you are in the position of a policymaker, or a decision maker in any way, please get informed and please help us define this as a form of child abuse. Please recognize this as a crime. Please create tools and, and 
and ways for professional to get more educated. Please create ways so that abuser get held accountable. And and really, we we need to have resources. We need to have protection for victims. Please, we need all of this. Help us. Now, if you are not one of those people that are in the position of making a decision, if you are a family or a friend or just an outside person in the society, that it's very likely that at some point in your life, you're going to see this happen right in front of your eyes. You're going to see a parent that's going to say a bad thing about another parent or someone that say a bad thing about a parent to the child or to a child or in front of a child. Or you may see a child that growing up have zero contact with another parent. When you see this kind of situation, don't just stand by, question it. When you see a child that suddenly using a different name than their legal name with the name that suddenly being changed into something else, questions these things. When you see a parent that being prevented from going to school activity, going to children's graduation, speak up really find out the information before don't participate in this campaign of alienation don't empower the alienators don't empower the abuser because what you are doing could destroy a child's life and it could take just tiny little action that you could make a huge difference i want to share with you a tiny little story in my life as well is that at one point when I was around, I don't remember the exact age, but I think about seven or eight. That was when my mother started to convince me um, indirectly. I don't remember if there was a serious conversation, but she was definitely uh, encouraged me to use her last name instead of my father's last name, which is my legal name. So I started to go to school and using my mother's name instead. And so that's the way that alienators do, trying to remove any memories and any any, any, anything, any impact, any influence of the alienated parent from the child's life. So my mother tried to erase my father by convincing me to use her last name instead of his name. And so I, I was doing that. And then one day um, there was someone, her friend or her colleague or someone came and visited. And then um, at one point, my mother walked out of the house to go somewhere and just for a moment or walk out of the room going somewhere and this lady suddenly said to me very firmly very calmly very quietly and very short but essentially said uh what you are doing where you're using your mother's name instead of your real legal name is not right it's illegal and not only that when you grow up you're going to have problem with your school record and things like that she said a very simple thing, and then my mother came back and she stopped. But I never forget that. That left such an impact on me. I, I, at that age, I didn't know what it mean, but I never forgot that. But what it did is that I immediately, from that point on, stopped using my mother's name, and I went on and used my father's name from that point. I never, never changed my mind from that point on, and I never forget. So simple, one simple statement change so much you a simple thing that you can say and do could change a child's life the same with my relative when she wrote that message to me and said hey your mother did something to prevent you from having a relationship with my father that's how i found out about my father that's how i was able to heal that's how i was found out who my father was and i was able to to finally understand where i came from because self-identity is such an important thing. We all want to know where we came from, who our parents are. So just one simple statement can change a, lot, a child's life. So please do something. Don't just stand by. And in particular, please don't participate. Don't join in to that campaign. Now, if you are an alienated parent, I am so sorry for what you are going through. I understand what you're going through, and I'm not saying it as an intellectual concept. I understand it in here, viscerally. I truly understand what you're going through. It's extremely painful, but I want you to know that you're not alone. 
that you are stronger than you think. And don't ever give up. Think of it that way, right? Or think of it this way. Let's say you were going home. You were going somewhere, you're driving, and you were going home. And for some reason, um, you need to take a particular exit, let's say, onto maybe an on-ramp to a freeway or maybe an exit of a freeway. But there's some somebody's abusive and, and getting very aggressive and cutting into the lane and preventing you from that exit. So you miss the exit. And, and so now you're you no longer was able to take the exit or the, the street that you need to go home. You don't just go, well, well, I'm gonna give up. I'm, I'm not going home anymore. No, you don't. The same with alienation. What you do is you might have to turn around. Maybe you have to take a different route. Maybe you have to take a side street. Maybe you have to take a different freeway. Maybe it's gonna take a lot longer. But you're going to get home no matter what. You don't just give up. The same with alienation. Your children, your children are important. They need you. So you can't give up on your children. It's the same thing. You, it might take longer. You might have to take a different route. And yes, yeah, somebody really impacted your path to your children's life. But you have the choice and you have the power. Don't give up on that. It's just a matter of taking a different route, uh, taking a different path, taking a bit longer. But don't give up on your children. They need you. So for Parental Alienation Awareness Day, um, actually, there have been a lot of different events and activities that have been going on um, you know, in the recent days and still going to be going on um, in the near future. I wanted to go through and um, and identify some of those um, that we participated in. And also, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank the people that helped um, with this. Um, so I wanted to uh, go through, and there's quite a lot of names that I, I also want to acknowledge, because these are the people that are in our community that help participate, but also some are in, in my team. And I wanted to thank everyone for making all of this happen, because these are all the different things that we as a community take action to raise awareness and that's important because when we take things in our, our hand we are empowered and even if we move the needle by a little even though we may not feel that it make a difference today really it does eventually it will the same thing with going to the gym you don't just go to the gym once and then for two hours and then go home look at the mirror and go well, I don't see any change, you know, let's just give up. It doesn't work that way. It's, it's, it's about going consistently and keep going and keep going. And maybe sometime you will lose track and not going to the gym for a day or two. But if you're consistently trying to go and do it with the best intention and with the best effort that you could, eventually you're going to see the result. You're going to see the healthier you. So the same with this. We can't give up on this cause because there's too many children out there that depend on this, our society depend on this. So I wanted, like I said, I wanted to talk about some of the events we have. Um, on Saturday, uh, no, I apologize, on Sunday, which is yesterday, it was wonderful. In Pennsylvania, there was six peaceful group bike rides in six regions of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, all over the state. And those rides end up in six courthouses where they then have a presentation outside in front of the courthouses about parental alienation. There were advocates, there was adult children uh, survivors, there was alienated parents, there was, there was policy maker, there was a court, um, I think there was sh a sheriff. So it was a really a very important day and it really, and this event was by Pennsylvania Bikers for Justice. Um, and I, I had the pleasure of participating in that by speaking a little bit about my experience. So I'm grateful for Pennsylvania Bikers for Justice. Um, they are not an organization that specializes in parental alienation, but, but they stand up for justice. And that's why they did these rights um, to raise awareness on parental alienation. So thank you for that um, advocate group for, for this work. Um, now today, if you guys um, look at our Facebook page, as well as many other organizational, uh, uh, many organization Facebook page, you will see that we released uh, a, what we call Standing Together for All the Children poster. Now this poster represents 45 organizations that collaboratively stand together 
against parental alienation to protect children. Um, and this poster is an initiative led by uh, Association Portuguesa para a Igualdade um, Parento e Direto dos Fios. And I apologize. I, I'm sure that I butcher that, but it essentially, uh, I think, uh, Portuguese um, Association for Equal Parenting Right and, and Children Right or something like that. I apologize. But that's the group that lead the initiative for this. OK, um, today, um, in front of the United Nations building, um, and so there's a group called Together for Changes. Uh, what they did is they have a mobile billboard that show information about parental alienation and they held a live stream in front of the United Nations building. And then they went and circled around in the New York Times Square right at the time where children came out from school because they wanted to again raise awareness. So I like to again also thank this organization Together for Changes. I also had an opportunity to uh, give a talk with this organization. So thank you for helping um, raising awareness and fighting uh, against this problem. Okay, um, in the in the last few number of weeks, many of us, um, you know, many, many of our member community members have reached out to their city uh, mayors and, um, you know, city council to get a proclamation. So um, I just want to mention a few. I'm sure that there are more, and we are still waiting for some other that are coming later. But for example, uh, and the proclamation is what the the city council, the mayor, recognize that parental alienation is child abuse, and recognize that today is an International Parental Alienation Awareness Day. What it does is raise awareness again, is to raise awareness, and it's empower victims and survivors in this fight against parental alienation. So. From city of Poland, um, I want to recognize Mayor Kevin Cole of the city of Poland in Texas. And this proclamation was initiated by um, our community members, Victoria, and supported by Alejandra, Carla, Alina, and Mike. Now, in San Antonio, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Mayor Ron Nirenberg. And this proclamation was initiated by our community member and a very strong advocate. Claudia. Um, from Harris County, I would like to acknowledge Commissioner Rodney Ellis of Harris uh, County uh, Precinct 1. And this proclamation or this actually resolution uh, was initiated by our community member, Brian. In Fontana, uh, city of Fontana, um, uh, in California, I would like to acknowledge Maya Aquaneta Warren and Maya Protem Peter Garcia uh, for the proclamation. Uh, in city of Torrance of California, I would like to acknowledge uh, and thank Maya Patrick Furry. Um, I, like I said, I'm sure there are more proclamations um, that I missed, but these are the ones that I have right now, um, uh, like in front of me. Um, okay, today uh, there's an event by FanPack which is an also another advocacy group. And uh, what they're doing today is they're doing a war of hope and love. So they built a war of hope and love. Uh, it, I think it's a virtual war where they feature messages uh, from parents to their children. And so I also like to thank the organization uh, FanPack who have always been very supportive of our work and we, who we truly respect their work as well. Okay, also on the weekend, on Saturday, we organized um, a campaign, a public awareness campaign called Children First. Now, Children First was our public awareness campaign that using, um, instead of a, a protest or, um, or a rally, we actually used a flash mob dance um, to raise awareness. So what we did is we had this dance, uh, and what we wanted to do is to have this positive, upbeat, you know, message that would reach the public. So uh, that actually happened in a lot of cities around the world. So I would like to acknowledge, first of all, Rachel um, in our team, who is a coordinator for all the cities. 
Uh, and in the um, who's responsible for my public relation for PI and media, I'd like to thank Tracy Lee and Chris. Um, and then um, in terms of the cities, um, in Riverside, in, in America, in Riverside, in California, I want to thank Gabriel. In Denver, I want to thank Katie, uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, in Southbury, uh, I want to thank John. Uh, in Jacksonville, I want to thank Atlanta. In Kansas City, I would like to thank Chris. In Walford, um, Michigan, I would like to thank Chris. Um, in Walford, uh, Sorry, yeah, in Wofford, uh, Michigan, I would like to thank Stephen. In Billings, um, I'd like to thank Hannah. In Raleigh, um, North Carolina, Carolina, I want to thank Maura. In Danville, I'd like to thank Evie. Rochester, New York, I would like to thank Amy. Uh, in Hermitage, uh, Pennsylvania, I would like to thank John. In Philadelphia, I would like to thank uh, Rayo. In Houston, I would like to thank Brenda and Children for Tomorrow. Children for Tomorrow is also a very strong advocacy group that have always been very, very important, play a very important role um, in helping educating the professionals and the, um, and the judges uh, in terms of parental alienation and also help empowering parents and children. Um, so we are grateful for their work and they have also been very supportive of our work. So we thank them for their collaborative effort for the flash mob dance in Houston. Um, in San Antonio, I would like to thank Lorraine. Um, I did the flash mob, I organized a flash mob in um, Los Angeles. Uh, and in Atlanta, I would like to thank Mattress. Now, outside of uh, America, I would like to thank Claire in Gold Coast, uh, Australia. In Hamilton, Canada, I would like to thank Mary. In Paris, I would like to thank uh, Moquette, uh, Paulette. And in Vilnius, uh, Luthiana, Lithuan Lithuana, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ramunas. In Mota, I would like to thank Anthony. In Mexico City, I would like to thank Octavio. In um, Republic of Trinidad, I would like to thank Trista. In Johannesburg, I would like to thank Dominic. In Hanoi, Vietnam, I would like to thank Bang. Uh, in Lima, Peru, I would like to thank Carlos. In uh, Gibraltar, I would like to thank Tracy Lee. Now, the flash mob um, was a dance that in a song by a band, The Rewind. I would like to thank them for donating this song to us, in particular, uh, the band member, Josh, Greg, um, Alexis, and Brad. Um, and then the dance was choreographed by Jason, and Jason was introduced to us by James Griffin. So thank you everyone for making participating and making this campaign possible. Uh, if you wanted to check out the campaign, you can go onto our Facebook page and you can see different dances in different city and photos and things like that. Um, so you can see how uh, we're spreading this message in a positive way around the world. And really thank you so much, everyone. I know that I haven't listed all of the events. I am actually not, uh, don't have all the events to share with you guys, but if you look around, there are a lot of events going on around the world um, today and around today to recognize Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Now, coming up very soon, we are going to be launching uh, what we call the V28. So it's sort of short for Victim to Hero, the V28 Club. Um, it's gonna be kind of like the AA Club sort of, but without the alcohol. Um, so V2H Club is gonna be sort of a social club. Um, it's sort of like a support group, but it's more on a social side of thing. We wanted to focus on positivity and empowerment and support. So we're gonna have uh, chapters around the world where parents can go and, and adult children of parental alienation can go and meet the people in their local community that understand them, that can support them. And so we're going to have activities for these clubs. And so we'll be announcing uh, about this club very soon. Uh, and if you wanted to participate and volunteer to help with this, you know, in your local community, let us know, because we're definitely going to be, uh, we wanted to create the support network for the victims and the survivors out there. Now I'm going to go through and look at some of the comment and question in the chat room. Now I, I apologize. I've been trying to focus uh, to make sure that I get the message out. 
So, um, and thank you everyone for watching and for leaving comment. Let me know if you have question or comment. So let me see. Okay, uh, Mary said she's calling from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and it's 17 years alienated. Now this is a very long time to be losing your children and without any hope because she's now back in court uh, fighting still. Uh, we see Grace said, we just want to see our kids and, and bring change. Grace said they are uneducated and definitely biased. Um, I think she's talking about professionals and, and uh, policymaker and the system. Uh, Mary said parental alienation is child abuse. Laura said, I can't listen to the children if they have been brainwashed by other parents. Uh, she said, we can't listen to children if they have been brainwashed by other parents. And that's the thing. We have to have people that very specialize and truly understand the dynamic and understand how can we get the right kind of information from the children. Because it's true, sometimes children will participate in the false allegations. They will go in and say things that never happened. They will accuse parents of things that never happened because there have been research that we've shown where children can have false memory. The children can have um, misguided memory. memory. Uh, Jennifer said, it's so painful. I wish there was a way to get through to my daughter. I'm so sorry. Uh, Jane said, it's so tricky. The children will parrot the abuser. It's very seductive. People will listen to the children before the targeted parent. Yeah, that is that is true. Heather said, alienation is bullying from a parent. Yeah. Brianna said, we are in a prison, but have hope in God. Um, yeah, if you have faith, um, you know, it, it's whatever religion, it doesn't matter what religion or what you believe in. Uh, but you have, if you have some way of empowering your, your conviction and your strength, then that's going to really help you with this fight. Jane said, do the right thing for the children, of course, but notice their influences. Jane said, thank you, Petra. Mary said, I just found a psych um, psychotherapist who is 100% against parental alienation and told me I'm suffering from severe domestic violence and abuse by proxy. Um, Brianna said, thank you, Petra. Laurie said, hello. Laura said, thank you. This is the story of my life. Yeah, Grace said, awful. Laurie said, how sad. And she sent some heart. Um, Tracy Lay said, you're an inspiration. Thank you. Mary said, on Saturday, we walked two kilometers around Burlington, Ontario, Canada for parental alienation awareness for parents and for grandparents and for children. And then along the way, we stopped to do the flash mob um, uh, three times. Wow, that's amazing. I love that. Thank you. Um, so uh, the group in Lima, Peru, they did a flash mob, but they're going to do another one. So for people that wanted to participate, you can actually participate. Um, with your local city, but you can also participate at home. If you go to victimtohero.com on our website, we have information on how you can participate from home because it's a dance that we give you the music and we give you step by step instruction. It's not too difficult um, and you can help spread the message. We just ask that if you could use a hashtag children first and if you can tag us and we know where you are and then we can repost your um, your post. Um, Jane said Stratford uh um another and fantastic club idea yes i want to contribute okay great wonderful okay if you have more question or comment uh please let me know um but other than that um i i think we're going to be having a community meeting very soon on zoom for people that want to participate you can go on our uh, facebook page and look at our list of events because if you go on the Facebook page, Victim to Hero, there's an event called, uh, there's a tab called events. And the next event that we have is in less than an hour. It's going to be a Zoom meeting for a community meeting. And it's going to be the opportunity for you to speak, to share your story, to share your message and to find support. So I'm looking forward to see you guys there. And for everyone else, um, you know, thank you for listening. Thank you for, for trying and please help. Um, for everyone, please help by, by liking this, uh, this video, please share it, um, and please join our mailing list because we need you to participate in all of this to make a difference. So our mailing list is on our victimtohero.com website. Um, and once again, my name is Petra Dieter. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.